Journey to the West, an audio drama series. Chapter Six, Part Two. Back to the match between the True Lord and the Great Sage. As they were both performing the impressive skill of cosmic imitation, the Great Sage suddenly noticed the monkeys from his camp were fleeing in fear. He began to panic and withdrew his form before pulling away with the rod. The True Lord saw him flee and began chasing with long strides, asking, "Where are you going? Surrender now, and your life can be spared." The great sage dared not linger in the battlefield and only kept running. When he was near the cave entrance, he was confronted by the six brothers of the Plum Hills, who blocked his way together, yelling, "Insolent monkey! Where do you think you're going?" The great sage didn't know what to do. So he squeezed his golden hoop rod into a sewing needle and hid it in his ear. Then, with a shake, he turned into a sparrow and flew on top of a tree branch. The six brothers hurriedly searched all around, but found nothing. So they all shouted, "The wicked monkey has escaped! The wicked monkey has escaped!" Just when they were making a scene, the true lord has arrived and asked, "Brothers." Where did you lose him? The deities answered. We had just surrounded him right here when he disappeared. Erlang opened his divine eyes wide and saw that the great sage had turned into a sparrow, which perched on a tree. He then withdrew his imitations and put away his divine blades and bow. With a shake, he transformed into a sparrow hawk. Spreading his wings to swoop in for an attack, the great sage saw this, swiftly darted away with a flutter of the wings, and turned into a large bald stork, the bird known as the lesser adjutant, before flying into the air. Arlang saw him and hurriedly shook his feathers. With a twist, he turned into a river gull, piercing through the clouds to peck the other bird. The great sage then plunged below into a ravine, turning into a fish before disappearing into the water. Arlang arrived by the ravine but couldn't find him, so he thought to himself, "The macaque must have gone into the water and turned into some sort of fish or shrimp. Let me transform again to catch him." And so he did, turning into a fish hawk hovering above the downstream waves. After some waiting, the fish that was the great sage came swimming along the current. Suddenly, he noticed a bird which looked like a heron, but not as greenish in color, like an egret, but without a decorative feather on its head, like an old stork, but without its red legs. That must be Erlang's transformation waiting for me. So he made a quick turn back with a swirl. Erlang saw it and said, "The swirling fish." Looks like a carp, but its tail is not red, like a perch that has no patterns on its scales, like a snakehead but no spots on its head, like a bream but without a needle in its gill. Why did it retreat the moment it saw me? It must have been a transformation of that monkey. He caught up with the fish and snapped at it with his beak. The great sage leapt out of water and turned into a water snake. He swam close to land and wriggled into the grass. Arlang fell to peck his target, but he heard a splash when a snake slipped out. He recognized it was the great sage, so he made a swift turn and transformed into a scarlet-crowned gray crane. Its long beak was like a pair of sharp iron pincers, aiming to eat the water snake whole. The snake hopped up and turned itself into a patterned bustard, standing rather stiffly on the bank, among buckwheat plants. Arlang realized what a vulgar creature he has turned into. The patterned bustard, you see, was the most lowly and wanton kind of bird. It would mate with anything: pheasants, phoenixes, eagles, crows, anything. Therefore, Arlong would not come anywhere near the thing. 
he quickly returned to his true form and approached the bird. Stretching the pellet bow to his fullest, he knocked the bird over with a single shot. The great sage took advantage of the fall and rolled down the cliff. He crouched under it and transformed again, this time into a temple for the tutelary of soil. His mouth opened wide into the temple's gate. His teeth became the flinging doors. His tongue turned into a bodhisattva statue, and his eyes became the windows. The only thing he had trouble dealing with was his tail. He ended up sticking it behind the temple in the form of a flagpole. The true lord arrived below the cliff, but couldn't find the fallen bustard. All he saw was a little temple. He opened his divine eyes wide to have a closer look, and found the flagpole sticking at the back of the building. He laughed and said, "This must be that macaque. He is trying to fool me again. I've seen temples before." But none of them would stick their flagpole at the back. This must be that beast in disguise. If he fooled me into entering, he would take hold of me with a bite. How could I go in then? Maybe I should pull a few punches to break the windows first, and then kick the doors open. The great sage heard it and thought in horror. How cruel! How very cruel! The doors are my teeth and windows my eyes. If he really hit my teeth and gouged my eyes, what should I even do? And so he suddenly leapt up and disappeared into the air. The true lord kept on chasing everywhere. And soon the six brothers of the Plum Hills arrived together and asked, "Elder brother, have you got that great sage yet?" The true lord chuckled and said. That little monkey just turned into a temple, thinking he could fool me. I was about to break his windows and kick his doors before he slipped away. Haven't been able to trace him since. How strange! How very strange! Everyone looked around, stunned, but they still saw no sign of the great sage. The true lord ordered, "Brothers, keep on patrolling this place. Let me go up to locate him." And so he swiftly rose on clouds and arrived in midair. Heavenly King Li was holding the spirit reflecting mirror high, with Nu Jia right next to him in the clouds. The True Lord asked, "Heavenly King, have you seen the Monkey King?" The Heavenly King answered, "He hasn't come up here. I'm keeping him right in view with this mirror." The true lord then told him all about their transformations and battles before saying, "He turned into a temple in the end. I was just about to hit him before he got away." Heavenly King Li heard his words, and began turning the mirror in every direction. Then he chuckled, "True lord, hurry up, hurry up! That monkey has gone invisible and left the encampment for your residence in Guanjiangkou." Erlang heard this, immediately grabbed his divine blades and began racing back to Guanjiangkou. The great sage, on the other hand, has already arrived. With a shake, he turned into the split image of the kindred lord Erlang. Having landed his cloud, he walked straight into the temple. The ghost judges naturally could not tell that he was a fake. And so, one by one, they all cowed out to greet him. The fake Arlang sat at the center seat and began examining his offerings. There was the sacrifice from Li Hu, whose wishes were granted. Offering from Zhang Long, who prayed for well-being. A document from Zhao Jia begging for a son, and a hope from Qian Bing to recover from illness. As he was reading, someone came in to report. Another kindred lord has arrived. All the ghost judges hurried outside to look and were aghast. The true lord said, "There was this heaven equaling great sage of souls. Has he been around?" The ghost judges answered, "We haven't seen any great sage, but there is another kindred lord inside going through the documents." 
The two lo then burst inside the doors. The great sage saw him and returned to his true form, saying, "No need to complain, young man. This temple belongs to a sun now." The true lord wielded his divine blades of three tips and double edges straight towards his face. The monkey king played a trick and dodged the blow before pulling out the sewing needle. With a bounce, it became as thick as a rice ball. He dashed forward to take his opponent head on. The two argued as they fought their way out the temple gates. Amidst fog and cloud, between chases and clashes, they arrived again at the mountain of flower and fruit. The four grey heavenly kings and the rest were so alarmed they all tightened their guard, while the six brothers of the Plum Hills came to the true lord's aid as they fought together to keep the handsome monkey king surrounded. We speak again of the mighty force master king. Who returned to the world above after delivering the imperial edict? The Jade Emperor was still talking in the treasure hall of Miraculous Mist with Guan Yin Bodhisattva, the Queen Mother, and other deities. He said, "Arlong has already been sent to battle. How come there hasn't been any news for a whole day?" Guan Yin folded her palms and said. May this humble cleric invite your Majesty and the Patriarch of the Way to the Southern Gate of Heaven, and have a look for ourselves. The Jade Emperor agreed. Sounds reasonable. And so they all went outside. Heavenly soldiers opened up the gates so they could observe from afar. What they saw were cosmic nets blocking from every direction. Heavenly King Li and Ne Jia holding up the spirit reflecting mirror in midair, and lastly the True Lord closing in on the Great Sage as they fought with all their might. The Bodhisattva said to the Elder, "What do you think of Ar Lang Shen, who was recommended by this humble cleric? I think he has indeed got the power, given how he has already had the Great Sage surrounded." But he hasn't been able to capture the monkey. I shall give him a helping hand now, and I'm sure it will do the trick. The elder asked, "What weapon do you intend to use, Bodhisattva? How will you help?" The Bodhisattva answered, "I will throw down my immaculate vase with willow tricks inside. It will hit right on the monkey's head." Even if it can't kill him, it should be enough to knock him over. Then Arlong, the little sage, could go ahead and catch him. The elder said, "Your vase is made of porcelain. If it hit him, it will probably be fine. But what if you missed his head or hit his iron rod instead? Wouldn't that break your vase? No need to make any move." Let me, the elder, give him a hand. The Bodhisattva asked, "What weapon have you got?" The elder said, "I've got one. I do. I've got one indeed." He rolled up his sleeve and took off a bracelet from his left arm, saying, "This weapon is forged from quality red iron." And refined the same way a magic pellet is made. It has gained divine powers and is capable of transformation. It cannot be destroyed by either water or fire, and it can snare anything inside. I call it the polished golden steel, or the golden steel hoop. Back in the day when I crossed the Han Gu Pass to convert foreigners to religion. I owed a great deal to this treasure. Day or night, it serves as the best protection. Let me throw it down to hit him. When he finished, he tossed it from the heavenly gate. The hoop rolled and tumbled straight into the camp inside the mountain of flower and fruit, directly hitting the monkey king on his head. 
the Monkey King was completely focused on the bitter fight against the Seven Sages, so he had no idea a weapon was falling from the sky. The thing hit him right on the skull, knocking him off balance. He stumbled over, but got up and tried to run away. The kindred lord Arlang, however, owned a skinny hound, which caught up to the Monkey King, bit him right on the calf, and pulled him down again. The great sage fell on the ground, cursing. You brute! Why don't you go bother your master? Why did you have to bite me? He quickly rolled over but couldn't get up. The seven sages closed in together and pinned him down. They immediately tied him up with ropes, then pierced a knife through his scapulae, disabling his ability to transform. The elder retrieved his polished golden steel and returned to the Hall of Miraculous Mist with other deities. On the other hand, all the heavenly kings withdrew their troops and pulled their camps. They approached the little sage to congratulate him, saying, We owe this feat to the little sage. The little sage said, It's all owing to the blessings from heaven's most honorable, as well as the might of my fellow sages. What am I to do with it? His brother said, Elder brother, this is no time for chat. Let's bring this rogue to the world above to see the Jade Emperor. An edict shall be issued to sentence him. The true law said, My worthy brothers, you have never been appointed by heaven. It will be inappropriate for you to have an audience with the Jade Emperor. Let the divine soldiers escort him for now, while I go with the heavenly kings to the world above to make our report. Make a thorough search through the mountain with your troops. When the place is emptied, you shall return to Guanjiangkou. Once I have claimed the rewards, I will be back to celebrate with you all. The six brothers of the Plum Hills followed his words. The true lord now rose into the clouds with the other gods. They sang songs of victory as they returned to heaven. Soon, they arrived outside the hall of omnipresent brightness. The heavenly scholars reported, The four grey heavenly kings and others have arrested the fiendish monkey by the title of Heaven Equaling Grace Sage. They have arrived and await your summon. The Jade Emperor therefore issued an edict to immediately send the mighty force monster king and heavenly soldiers to march the monkey to the monster beheading platform, where this wretch will have his body chopped to pieces. Alas, this is truly infamy now met with the most bitter penalty, heroism soon to end in misery. We do not know what will happen to the Monkey King's life in the end. Please wait until the next chapter.